What's up, nerds? We're your hosts this week. I'm Jake. I am Chad. This week we're sponsored by Ray's Energy Drinks. We're also sponsored by Crybaby Craig's <laughs> Hot Sauce. I was going to mimic the way you said it just to make fun <laughs> of you, but then you made fun of yourself before I could do it. <laughs> so this week we'll be talking uh, more about She-Hulk on Disney Plus with episode two. Jake. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was moving. I was moving my chair, and I thought you were gonna. Anyways, uh, we will also be talking about uh, House of the Dragon now streaming on not Disney Plus. It's HBO Max. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's really good. Second episode. We'll get into that. But before we get into that, let's get into this. Uh, this is the All Things Nerd podcast. <laughs> Welcome back, nerds, to the All Things Nerd podcast, your weekly dive into all things nerd. Jake, you jerk, how was your week? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my week was, it was good. I went to um, Orlando, Florida to visit some family, and while I was there, although it was briefly spent, I didn't grab it before the thing, I'm going to grab it, <laughs> uh, briefly spent, I, <laughs> I went to... Um, what do you call it? Universal <laughs> Studios, by the sounds Universal, of it. Universal Studios. <laughs> <laughs> coming back, coming back, coming back. This is why right, you go. guys should like, subscribe, and watch and this on YouTube. <laughs> yes, uh, my cousin and I went to Universal Studios. Uh, we did not get to spend a ton of time there, um, but I'll tell you, the place is fucking rad. And it's huge. You literally, if you go online, they sell you like weekend packages. You literally need a weekend to see everything that this place has to offer. It's insane. Uh, mm -hmm. We walked around for about four hours and we only saw a fraction of it. But we did find Diagon Alley, um, which is a secret. They don't tell you where it is. You have to find it. And we yeah. found it. And I got a wand. Oh. Actually, I got two wands. I got myself the elder wand. Because and he's then... an elderly. <laughs> and then I also got my girlfriend a wand, um, which is also pretty cool, in my opinion. Um, but it's really cool because <clears throat> these wands interact with shit in Diagon Alley. Like... If you do, they give you like a map of where stuff is and you have to follow the map and like wave your wand. And... Oh no, you froze. Jake. What? Did I freeze? Yeah, you froze. So no! you go around with the map and then you wave your wand at certain stuff and then what happens? And then stuff in the park like interacts with your wand. Like water fountains will spurt water out. Uh giant feathers will float into the air like it's crazy it's cool i didn't get to do a ton of it because my i don't know <laughs> i just i'm a i'm an adult and the person i was with i don't know if he would have been as nerdy about it as me if i ran around waving my wand at shit i mean he is a giant nerd and he, he is i just don't know if, if harry potter is his thing Hey, he loves Harry Potter. I just don't know if he would be as into, like, let's run around and, like, fucking... Wave our wands in yeah. public. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> plus, we we were on a time crunch. You know, we only had so much time. But anyways, point being, the place is fucking rad. I got a wand. Super dope. I can't wait to go back, uh, probably with my girlfriend, who will be a dork with me, and wave <laughs> our wands, that shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> How about you, Chadley? Uh, well, so this weekend I had some friends come up and visit me, which was cool. Hadn't seen them since I moved in. Mm -hmm. um, so it was fun. We hung out. We went to this uh, sports bar that's just a couple miles down the road. It's got a bunch of like pool tables, so we went and played pool, played games, stuff like that. It was it was a good time. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And no one threw up on my carpet this week. I was so. gonna. I was just gonna <laughs> ask. Was there any vomit involved? Uh, th 
one person did vomit, but into the toilet. So, yeah, and it was, was not it me. No. Ah, damn it. <laughs> was it the same person as last time? Yep. <laughs> right on. <laughs> She knows who she's, she is. She, I was like, she's good at that. <laughs> when, because it's her and her boyfriend that <laughs> come and visit, and we just mock her incessantly about it. Like she's like, oh, I'm feeling kind of drunk. I was like, well, there's the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that. It's funny. You sh- you should just get like a you know like the old school like cat litter boxes. Yeah. Like the plastic, and then just cut out a piece of carpet and put it in the cat box. <laughs> And then be like, hey, if you're going to throw up on the carpet, please do it there. <laughs> in the designated <laughs> carpet throw up box. Yeah. And just <laughs> put, like, her name on it. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> um, Anyways. There is some nerd news also before we get into our first sponsor. Um, well, first, D23 is coming up in uh, two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Uh, the 9th through the 11th. In California, it's the big Disney thing, so we should be getting more Marvel news and probably the actual trailers that were released at Comic Con or shown mm-hmm. at Comic Con. So, yeah, that's something to look forward to. There's rumors going around that uh, Penn Badgley uh, from the TV show You, uh, he plays Joe on the show, is being kind of uh, set to be Mr. Fantastic. Um, for Which the Fantastic was, Four. Yeah. So we saw John Krasinski in Doctor Strange 2. That was just kind of to appease the fans. But the actual yeah. going for, going forward, it looks like Penn Badgley will be our Mr. Fantastic. And mm. I, I like it. He looks the role. And he can also kind of like play that sociopathic, like... Yeah. Is ten steps ahead of everyone, but doesn't know how to like interact yeah. in a room full of people. Yeah. So. Oh. Uh, cocky and sarcastic. Probably more famously known from. Gossip Girl. Oh yeah, as yeah. the Gossip Girl. Yeah. Spoiler alert: If you guys never finished that show from fifteen years ago. Never started it, but I know. He's, but I think you told me that <laughs> yeah. he was he was the Gossip Girl, like he was the one. Yeah. Writing the whole time, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Pissed off my ex at the time because she wanted me to watch it. And after like three episodes, I was like, he's he's Gossip Girl, isn't he? And she's like, did you look it up? I was like, no, but it's kind of obvious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways. <laughs> uh, also, some DC rumors that are actually good. Take it away, Jake. Potentially. These are rumors. Nothing set in stone right now. But from what we've read and been seen online is that... Uh, thank the gods that Ezra Miller just sucks dicks at being a person. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just a Henry, terrain Henry, a human. Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck are being brought back as obviously Man of Steel and Super, aka Superman, and uh, Batman, aka the Dark Knight, aka um, Bruce Wayne, <laughs> aka aka. <laughs> when, Winnie the Bish. <laughs> I'm glad that you finished it because that was exactly where my mind went. Um, anyways, to kind of you know, be the, you know. the front and center if, of yeah, the they, yeah, which is the way it fucking should be and yeah. should have been since Man of Steel came out fucking ten years ago. Yeah. Ugh. Warner Bros. Technically, anyways. Henry Cavill is still in negotiations, but. He's also yeah. filmed a scene for Black Adam, supposedly. Yeah. But here's the here's the like double edged sword of it is Black Adam tested so poorly that the last movie that tested as poorly as Black Adam, they fucking canceled it. Batgirl. Yeah. Uh and Ezra Miller, who is a piece of fucking shit. Uh, his movie for The Flash tested so high that the last movie that tested as well as it did in the screen testing was The Dark Knight. Yeah. Like, so it's like... Christian God, Bale. <laughs> yeah. Fucking damn it. <laughs> God fucking damn it. But at so, least we can rely on the fact that 
Ezra Miller is just a piece of work, and they do not know how to interact in society. Yeah. Supposedly know... they're going to get get some help, which... Yeah. Good. Whatever. Yeah. Hopefully it works. Lock them up. We... Yeah. That's the help. Yeah. <laughs> There is I, multiple counts of assault. Uh, yeah, it's not just like a isolated incident. This dude is off the rails. Yeah, they yeah. they him got and arrested. Amber heard him and Amber heard go bowling together. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I mean, Ezra Miller. They got arrested what like four times in two weeks in the same yeah. state, and then went on the run and got arrested like three or four more times. Like, it's and not like good. also got like accused of grooming children. Like, soliciting minors, yeah. Like, nothing happened, but, you know, solicitation is, you know, fuck them at that point. Like, not yeah. not, not the, you know what I mean? Yeah. Fuck the person doing it. Yeah. Throw them in jail. Yeah. Where did that poorly? <laughs> yeah. I was following your train of thought, and I'm glad that you dug yourself out, so I didn't have to. Let's get on to sponsor number one, because we do have a couple of things to talk about uh, for actual releases this week so mm -hmm. we are mm -hmm. sponsored by ray's energy drinks as you guys know fantastic energy drink zero sugar zero calories zero crash so much more than just energy drinks if that's not your thing <clears throat> listen up check them out learn how to save 15 percent. we'll be right back with you to talk about she hulk what's up nerds i wanted to take a minute and talk to you about ray's energy an incredible energy drink that provides max energy with zero crash Ray's Energy takes a giant leap of faith with instilling a high-quality formula to bring a powerful, yet sustained, energetic experience to help you push your workouts and focus to the next level. Perfect for anyone at any time and powered by their Refresh Formula technology, Ray's Energy delivers a performance-enhancing energy drink that aids in multiple different categories that include targeted focus, better recovery time, improved clean energy levels, and a boost in stamina and hydration. But most importantly, every can of Ray's Energy has absolutely zero calories, zero sugar, and zero carbohydrates to give you a smarter and healthier option. So don't settle for an energy drink that contains more sugar and carbohydrates than you can count. Instead, head over to repsports.com. That's R-E-P-P-S-P-O-R-T-S dot com and use the promo code nerd podcast at checkout for 15 percent off your order or if you don't know what you want go ahead and click the link that's in the description for to get a 50 dollar sample pack for free all you do is you cover the cost of shipping again make sure you use promo code nerd podcast at checkout to let them know that we sent you all right nerds uh we are going to talk about episode two mm -hmm. <laughs> I couldn't remember if it was two or three. Episode two of She Hulk. Um again, streaming on Disney Plus. And the show so far has been incredible. Yeah. Um Incredible She Hulk. <laughs> we will say Spoiler uh, Alert. We, spoiler alert. <laughs> and we told we told you that we would keep you updated. There have been no Daredevil sightings as of that. <laughs> I'm glad he used the word sightings. That's what I wanted you to say. <laughs> <laughs> yep, still no Daredevil. Still no Matthew Murdock. No Charlie Cox. I saw, I sent it to you. This is a little off topic, but it's about Charlie Cox's Matt Murdock. Yeah. Um, yeah I sent you a video. I thought it was funny because he's like, you know, when he's in character, he, as he's like reaching for stuff, like he just like knows where it is because that's his ability. And he's like, <laughs> it takes him like so many different takes when filling because he'll like miss the thing he's reaching for. Cause it's like to the side of his like peripheral vision and stuff like that. And I just thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was fun. You just said it was dumb. What? Yeah, it was it? dumb. It was a dumb video. Like You're I didn't dumb. think, I didn't think it was funny. I just thought it was cool. Like, no, I'm it was just giving you shit. You're just a giving dick. You shit. It's fine. Whatever. Move on. on. <laughs> so as, at the end of the mm. first episode, you know, she turns into the She-Hulk in the courtroom, saves a bunch of people, and because of that, her court case was thrown out uh, because now the jury was no longer unbiased because she saved their lives. 
And because of that, she got fired. Mm -hmm. Dumb. Just happened. so dumb. Uh, but she gets offered a new job by the attorneys that had her case thrown out. And yeah. the first order of business is they want her to defend Abomination, who was yeah. a bad guy in The Incredible Hulk with Edward Norton. Yeah. The better, better looking Hulk, in my opinion. But I think as CGI for the Hulk, yes, I really like Mark Ruffalo as Bruce Banner. We've been over this countless times. I know. I know. I know. You think that Mark Ruffalo is just very vanilla. But well, I the problem, kind of the whatever. Yeah. Anyways, um, they are making a lot of people have made the argument that the Incredible Hulk was not canon. It is because the main bad guy from that movie is now in this show, was in Shang Chi, and they bring up Shang Chi in this. We'll get to that. That's kind of at the end of the episode. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but Eli Roth, uh, not Eli Roth, um, Tim Roth? Tim Roth. Tim Roth. Plays uh, Emil Blonsky. Yeah. Who kind of like Eli, but is Abomination. Abomination, yeah. yeah. So he's reprised his role, and her first... Uh, like I said, order of business is to defend him in court. Uh, this is a conflict of interest for her because he tried to kill her cousin. <laughs> yeah, and before we get a little bit further into that, um, one of the stipulations of her taking this job oh, yeah. uh, is that she has to be She-Hulk at work. She can't just mm -hmm. be Jennifer mm -hmm. Walters. She has to be in Hulk form while at work, <clears throat> yeah. on assignment, and in court. I think it's they very much like play into that because like she shows up very professional and ready to go on her first day as Jennifer Walters and the dickhead who like hired her is like mm -mm, hulk yeah. it up and she's like what do you mean and he's like oh you're gonna be representing as she Hulk you can't be you yeah uh oh I forgot to look it up um it's something uh the the law firm is actually a very famous law firm within the the marvel comics f because they represent a lot of super powered people not a lot of heroes though yeah uh, like matt murdoch has been on the the opposite end of them countless times i mean they did uh they tried to sue peter parker in the comics uh and spider-man and all of these which, things, so which has been our theory since we started this show, or like uh, heard about it coming out, is that we think that Matt Murdock will be opposing Jennifer Walters in court. Yeah, at yeah. at some point. Yeah. Um. Which is, I mean, it's not a hundred percent confirmed that we'll see Matt Murdock in the courtroom. But we will see Charlie Cox as just Matt Murdock again in this show. Um, according to IMDb, he is listed as both Matt Murdock and Daredevil in the credits. Yeah. Still haven't seen him yet, so we can't confirm or deny or that. <laughs> but, so, you know, she gets this big fancy office. She's told that her first case is, it's basically his appeal uh, Emil yeah. Blonsky's appeal to get out of prison saying that he's mm -hmm. been reformed and she's like I don't know if I can do this because this is a conflict of interest and the like one of the partners at the law firm uh, Holloway is like well Emil Blonsky already said he'll sign the, the waiver that you know he won't hold the, the conflict against you he just wants you to represent him Yeah, and if you don't do it you don't have a job yeah so yeah. she's kind of like <laughs> So she goes to see Emil Blonsky in prison as she mm -hmm. Hulk, as like her job says she has to, and immediately they're like, <laughs> "You can't come in here like that." Like, <laughs> no superpowers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so then she's like walking around in like baggy clothes, like <laughs> in this fortified prison, and we see Emil Blonsky, who's just very Namaste. Emil. Yeah. Yeah. He's not Abomination at the moment, so. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it also I, leads that he can change back and forth. I was going to say, because they never, at any point so far until now, have they ever shown that he can um, transform like the Hulk does. Yeah. I mean, we but. saw it in one of the trailers for the show, but that could yeah. have just... Marvel likes to throw weird things into their trailers, so yeah, it's now official. He can change back and forth. Yeah, we don't know uh, if it's triggered or if it's <clears throat> on command, like She Hulk. We have yet to find out. I'm assuming it's on command because, again, he he's Shang-Chi. very with it in in the Incredible Hulk. He's very like in his mind. He's very there. Uh, yeah. So I assume it's uh, not triggered. I assume it's. Oh, I mean, with She-Hulk, too, it is triggered at the same time as, like, she can, like, control it, but she does get triggered and Hulk out. So I assume he's the same way. Like, he can control it, but at the same time, if you piss him off, he'll probably just... Yeah, kind of like Bruce was in, like, from the Avengers, you know, we saw him get triggered, but then also later in the movie, he he just, like, was like, oh, that's my secret cap, you fuck. And then, like, got <laughs> you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's a callback to episode one of <laughs> Shield. Um, well, um, Jennifer calls Bruce, who has been her guide so far into the Hulk life, and he basically is like, "Hey, man, um, um, what's his name? Abons- Labonski." Um, Blonsky. Emil. Emil Blonsky. Yeah. Emil. He wrote me. She's like, hey, I have to defend this guy. I feel kind of weird taking this job. And he's like, do it. Everybody deserves a second chance. This, you know, he, Emil wrote me a very heartfelt letter a couple years back. Water under the bridge. And we some haikus. Good. Yeah. And some haikus. Yeah. He's like, we are good. But uh, at this same time, they do show that Hulk is in a Sakaar. Sakarian, Sakarian, Sakar. I don't know. I don't know because yeah. I've only <laughs> ever heard just Sakar. But he's uh, in a Sakar spaceship and he is in space. He is yeah, no longer on Earth, and we don't they call know it a where Commodore he's, Cruiser from Sakar. We do not know where he's fucking off to, but we believe it would be to Sakar to film World War World, Hulk. World War Hulk. Hopefully, and Planet we'll Hulk. That. Yeah. They, we'll see what they happens. They kind of can connect them. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but if yeah, you heard so barking he is, in the background and me just, like, aggressively snapping my fingers. No, no. So he is no longer on Earth, and I'm assuming no longer in the picture for the rest of the series. I think he was just kind yeah. of there as a stepping stone, stepping off point for her. Kind of as know, an introduction. Like, yeah. yeah. I doubt that he... If this show is going to be a multi-season, which I hope it is because of how much I enjoy yeah. the Daredevil TV show from Netflix, how it's superhero and law, and this is like this is like the Scrubs version of Grey's Anatomy, <laughs> you know, that sort yeah. of thing. Uh, <clears throat> I, I hope that there's more seasons than just the one, but we're yet to find out. But yeah, he's gone. Uh, and so she decides to take the case officially, calls her boss, Holloway, and is like, I got it. I think that I have a really good case to get him out on appeal. And then he's like, yeah, uh, watch the news. (laughs) And what does she see when she turns on the news? Jake. Uh, she sees abomination or Emil as Abomination, mm-hmm. fighting in underground fights, which we saw in Shang-Chi. Yeah. Uh, and it's literally the clip from Shang-Chi yeah. of, of him fighting Wong. And so she basically is just like, well, fuck. <laughs> what the f- <laughs> Yeah. And then the Ramones <laughs> yeah. start playing in the background. <laughs> yeah. And- yeah. yeah. Um, we also get two huge... One huge, one physically huge. Uh, anyways. And then also just a headcanon piece that I'll get into after that because it's not important, yeah. but it's there. Uh, why don't you do the first one and I'll do the second one. Y- you want me to do the, the the big or the physically huge? Okay, the big. So, ching, ching. <laughs> <laughs> T. 
ting ting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in the period of time, it's earlier in the episode where Jennifer Walters has been fired. She's kind of like looking at dumb, <laughs> like clickbait, like almost BuzzFeed esque uh, articles, like 10 unorthodox ways to earn money and start over because she we see like a montage of her being denied at like multiple law firm jobs because of the fact that she is also the She-Hulk. So it's like, be a mascot at Disney, like that sort of thing. But on the side of, you know, where there's normally more clickbait-esque articles, there's two that are there. The first one is massive. And it says, man with metal claws fights in bar fight or like, Gets in bar like fight. Bar, gets in a bar brawl or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Normally, you'd be like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> That's Florida Man. Uh, but it's the Metal Claws, <laughs> which is the first hint of Wolverine. Wolverine. Well, this would now be our third hint at Wolverine in a very subtle... This is not so subtle. The first two were pretty subtle. What was uh, the... Well, the first one was a deleted scene from Iron Man 1. If I'm well, thinking of what yeah. you're thinking of. Yeah. And then the other one was the bar in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Oh, yeah. In Madrigal. You're right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I forgot the name of the bar, but it's a place that he frequents in the yep. comics. Yep. You're right. Which I, I assume that. is the bar that James McAvoy and uh, Michael Fassbender find yeah. him in in uh, first class. And he's like, the two of you can fuck off. I don't think so because i don't know if they would have gone that far i feel like they would have just gone like in north america so that it doesn't matter that shit's not canon anyway typical white american to just think that everything's about america way to go i said and canada (laughs) wow don't you dare (laughs) you just call me a jew (laughs) stop jake (laughs) I love, if anybody doesn't know this, off camera... They I don't know call, this, so you need yeah, to explain I this. I love to call Chad racist, even though he's not. He's, like, the most sympathetic, like, person ever. And I'm barely colored, but I love to just dig in on him. It and make call me him feel terrible. <laughs> it's hilarious. Because I stumble <laughs> and mutter when I speak sometimes. And when I do, he's like, did you say this? You're the worst fucking person ever. <laughs> Uh, and that's how I know that my toaster's not waterproof. <laughs> the second, whatever. The second, the second big one. There is <laughs> the uh, in the same article right underneath the Wolverine Easter egg. Uh, they say, yeah, uh, something along the lines of giant humanoid or whatever person sticking out of like the Atlantic Ocean or some yeah, shit like says, that. It's like. The truth behind the giant statue in the middle of the yeah. ocean. Which has been an ongoing annoyance for Chad and I. Is that, like, how the fuck, since the Eternals movie, basically, you guys know, if you've seen, or you friends know that, if you've seen it, the Eternals, at the end of it, the Celestial is coming out of the core of the planet, and they stop it, but it's, like, halfway out, so it's, you yeah. know. Like, I was gonna make a I was gonna make a gross joke, but it's, <laughs> I'll stop. It's like halfway sticking out of the water, uh, but it's a massive, massive thing. And this is Chad and I have both been like, how the fuck have has nobody mentioned this in all the movies that, that have come out so far, TV shows? So this is finally our first very subtle yeah. uh, hint at it at, or nudge towards it. Yeah. There's been. Um, there's been projects where like things that have come out in the MCU where it makes sense that that wouldn't be the focus. Like Spider-Man No Way Home, even though that's a big movie, it's very focused on that. You know, Hawkeye, same sort of thing, but like Spider Spider-Man No Way, we've talked about this, Chadley. Spider-Man No Way Home took place at the same time that uh Hawkeye took place during Christmas, so it would have been Eternals would have been after the fact. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, but also, like, Falcon... Well, I guess Falcon and the Winter Soldier also would have then... That would have been after. 
Mm-hmm. So, and that was, like, very much based on, like, world events. So, like, why wasn't that, like, even brought up, like, in background and stuff like that. But, yeah, it's been a point of contention where we're, like, so does this movie exist in canon? Or was it just, <laughs> yeah. like, there? Yeah. Like, what's going on? Uh, but finally, they're starting to acknowledge it, which is awesome. Finally. Yeah. yeah. And then this is just, like, a head canon for me. Because on that same web page, there's a tab at the top of the web page that says, where's Ant-Man? And as we know, like, Scott Lang has, like, a podcast, and he's been doing, like, book tours and all this stuff, uh, you know, kind of capitalizing on the fact that, like, he was a part of the Avengers for the the endgame battle. Yeah. And so there's a, a tab that just says, where's Ant-Man? <clears throat> And there's no context to it. So in my head, it's like a real life Where's Waldo? And you have to find Ant-Man in the picture. That's what I'm hoping. It's kind of like Wordle meets uh, Where's Waldo, but with Ant-Man. So it's like a daily picture. I kind of imagine, and actually I recently watched uh, Nowhere Home again. And I kind of imagine now that uh, after the events of Endgame, they've... The Avengers are not necessary, basically. Yeah. There is no Avengers level threat at this point. And uh they even say it in Nowhere Home, um and I just lost no my train. No way thought. home. You said that twice, but continue. Uh No Way Home. Yeah. He's <laughs> Nowhere Home. Nowhere Home. Um uh, there's no but, Avengers level threats, so they're kind yeah. of like unnecessary. They're kind of like spread apart. Yeah, and there's a part in that movie spider-man 3 i'll say it that way happy <laughs> where peter is talking McGuire. to the other peter parkers and he's like i was in the avengers meaning that the avengers steve rogers is gone iron man's gone vision is gone uh wanda's gone dark side you know like they're the yeah. avengers aren't a thing right now um so yeah. yeah i don't know i don't remember how i got to that from what you just said but i got there Oh, because it seems like so. At least for Scott Lang, I'm kind of oh projecting. yeah. There are no Avengers. He's doing yeah. this as a doing these things as a way to like keep himself relevant and yeah, exactly. That that is why I yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Word. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> this show is great. There is a uh, another end credit scene. My my theory after these first two episodes, that all the end credit scenes are going to be kind of, like, goofy, funny end credit scenes, probably until the last episode. Uh, Because this one is a follow-up from Jennifer Walters as She-Hulk, but, like, at her parents' house. Like, she went over for, like, Sunday dinner, and they have a bunch of chores for her to do that involve heavy lifting. Like, bringing in, you know, like, all the Culligan jugs of water so that they're inside, mounting a TV, and she's just, like, doing it with, like, no effort. And her cousin, who is kind of, he seems kind of like a stoner, but, like, they made a point to, like, congratulate him on being promoted to, like, the Best Buy manager. Uh, is like, oh, I could have done that. And she's like, it's fine. <laughs> like, yeah. And <laughs> she's just, like... Unscripted. Uh... What do you think the very last episode uh, end credit? We did this with Miss um, Marvel as well, uh, and we were right. Um, but or actually, we were wrong because we didn't think that Captain Marvel. We were like, I don't think it's going to be Captain Marvel. I want it to be Captain Marvel. Yeah, we thought it would and be then, Monica, and then but... it was Captain Marvel. So, what do you think we're going to do it now? Um, we didn't script this. So, what do you think off the top of your head? Do you think the end credit scene will be in the last episode of She-Hulk? I have two theories. Okay. One is that it's going to... Because they've already brought Emil Blonsky back this early, where it's, I think that's going to be like the main case that she's working on throughout the show. Mm-hmm. It might be a teaser or like kind of like hinting towards the Thunderbolts. Like, maybe Val shows up again, something like that. Or it's going to lead into Echo and uh, Daredevil Born Again. Ooh, I think it's going to be the Thunderbolts. That that, that was going to be mine. It makes more logical sense, 
but we know that before the Thunderbolts comes out, we're going to get Echo and Daredevil first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in Marvel fashion, since we're not quite to the end credit scenes hinting towards the next big bag, big bad, not big bag. <laughs> uh, he's a big bag of bad. Um, that it's going to kind of be hinting at, you know, the next yeah. step. I think they've they've already introduced uh, Titania and Abomination, uh, which are both uh, presumably going to be in the Thunderbolts. Uh, so I think that's going to be the end credit. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like that they like that Titania is just like a social media influencer that also has superpowers. Yeah. And they even use that in the marketing, which I thought was cool. Like her, like <clears throat> graffitiing over She Hulk posters in LA. Well, and, and, I, and I love that. Like they made it such a small scene. It was just like, bam, done. But I think it's going to come back in a big way. I think, uh, I obviously, I think Abomination is going to be a big part of this season and mm-hmm. Titania as well. Yeah. Um, and then it'll make sense in the end with the Thunderbolts. I, I what believe. would be really, in, again, still off script, just projecting. Uh, I think that even though Titania was in the wrong, like, busting into the courthouse, what if she sues Jennifer Walters and that's how we get Matt Murdock? In the I don't think Matt Murdock would. I don't think he would either. Titania, no. Yep, I and jumped the gun on that, and then as I, I was saying, I was like, well, "That's wrong." That's. I think it's going to be the opposite way, opposite way around. Matt Murdock looks out for like people who actually deserve it. I think and he'll Gen- be on the defense against abomination. And right now, Jennifer Walters is defending a known bad guy, and I don't buy his whole uh, "I'm a changed man" bullshit. Not yeah. even a little bit. No, I think, yeah. So I, I think Matt is going to be on the opposite side of. Yeah. I, I want like a fucking, like Law and Order kind of like court scene between Matt Murdock and Jennifer Walters. That's what I would love to see. And then, Especially like in the courtroom, he's so good like in the in, courtroom. Oh, your camera. I'm still went here. Out. I'm still here. I just bumped it. Sorry. I, I want like in the courtroom for them to hate each other, but like on the street, be like, we have to help each other. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Like. Oh, my camera but, is all sorts of messed up. Yeah. Just stop moving. <laughs> I wasn't touching my desk <laughs> at all. But that's what I'm hoping for. Is uh, yeah. Yeah. But who knows? That's just we were just yeah. going off our own thing here. We'll tell you more next week. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's stop talking about this for now until we know more, and uh, we'll jump into sponsor number two. And uh, that so- is. Cool. <laughs> cool. Sponsor number two is Crybaby Craig's Hot Sauce. It's a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes on fucking everything. Including uh, your Ray's energy drinks. Yeah. <laughs> Including Ray's energy drinks. Get them uh, let's listen up and we'll tell you a little more about it. Hey, you nerds. Do you love spice? Supporting small businesses? What about enhancing the flavor of your favorite foods? If you said yes to any of those, our good friends over at Crybaby Craig's have the perfect solution for you. Crybaby Craig's is a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes perfectly with your favorite foods, adding the perfect amount of spice and enhancing the flavor of everything it touches. Started in Minneapolis by Craig back in 2012, Crybaby Craig's has become a Minneapolis and Minnesota staple in the sauce world. So head over to crybabycraigs.com and order yours today. All right, everyone. So to continue with the second half of this episode, we're going to talk about the, well, not the, House of the Dragon. There's no the at the beginning, and I say it wrong every time. (laughs) Uh, But we're going to talk about uh, episode two. Spoiler warning. Spoiler alert. Boner alert. Maybe? I don't know. There wasn't anything. It was a great episode. I'm just trying to kill time, and I thought I was being funny, and clearly I was <laughs> not. Sweet. Mahalo. Uh, especially since, like, the context of this episode? Oh, God. Oh, yeah. g- 
Can I stop? <laughs> can we redo nope, that? Nope, nope, nope. Keep it going. No. <laughs> I was not thinking. <laughs> this episode is actually very concerning for a lot of reasons. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Take it away, Jake, I guess. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, so this episode is you'll see you got you 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 guys will see why this is uh funny. Uh in it's a not bit here. First off, it's not funny. <laughs> it's funny that it's, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Let's that, that's what I meant. That's yeah. what I meant. Uh but this episode is six months takes place six months after the events of the first episode where um, Jesus Christ! Uh, Rhaenyra's mom Rhaenyra. and R- baby well, brother. Rhaenyra gets uh, named heir to the throne. Yeah. This is six oh, months after that right. scene, uh, after uh, the death of her mother and her well. infant brother, and uh, Prince Damon being banished from King's Landing, exiled. Yeah. Um. I first and foremost, Rhaenyra. This is, I, I know that sometimes Chad and I will complain about uh, females in movies, but it's only they're because they're poorly written by men. Only because we want them to be better. It's not because we're like, oh, this girl is supposed to do this. That's dumb. You know, like it's only because we want them to be better written and like, but you know, like accurate. I want them and to be I, written as equally well as men. Yeah, and so far, I realize it's early but so far Rhaenyra is a badass yeah she's awesome this is what we want out of a female character it, exactly. it in a show or movie or something like that whatever uh she's a badass i love i'm so far i'm loving it intelligent not afraid to speak her mind willing yeah. to just fuck shit up yeah and just show that like she's in charge disobedient you know like yeah to her, to her king slash dad yeah because yeah. she's like fuck the patriarchy yeah i have skills that can be used i'm yeah. going to use them there there's a scene where she like kind of speaks up because she in court uh yeah, yeah where they they show like the council or whatever and they're sitting around their little table and they're talking about what should we do and she's like Let's do this. And then somebody shuts her down, and then her dad slash the king is like, yeah, get her the fuck out of here. And then yeah. basically later on, she's like, fuck this. I'm yeah. going to do my plan, and her plan totally worked. And we could mm. talk about it in a couple minutes. I skipped ahead of a bunch of a shit. A well, bunch she, uses of the shit. Sa- she uses the same tactic that she suggested, but in a different scenario where it would still work. And yeah. it saves lives and we'll get to that we'll get to that we'll get to it but you know so she does speak out in in court against you know what all the the high lords are talking about because we now know that the reason that ships are being ransacked which they kind of only hinted at uh in the first episode is because there's like a clan of basically crab people dude Uh, they they call them like the crab king yeah uh and they are super badass, but it's Mr. Krabs from SpongeBob. Yeah, he's all about that money. Me money. <laughs> <laughs> no, these people are fucking dope. Uh, I love a good bad guy. I I do. And uh, these they are we've scurvy only, we've ridden seen, yeah. pirates. We've only seen a little bit of them so far, but they are brutal. Just like yeah. nail. I, I don't want to say crucifying because they're not on a cross, but they're just like nailing people to like wood stakes in the ground and like letting them get eaten alive by crabs. It yeah. is diabolical. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, but- as Billy Butcher would put it, it's diabolical. I love it. I yeah. can't wait to see more of these guys. People, sorry. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know anything about them. We we don't know who's leading them. We we have a picture, but they're like, or not a picture. We see like a glimpse of them. They yeah. have like a half mask on. The bottom half of their face is covered in like scabs, basically yeah. from scurvy, because they literally are just pirates. Yeah. 
Um, but as they're discussing like how to handle this, uh, Lord uh, Corliss, uh, he's the dude with the the blonde dreads. Uh, he's... Blondie dread. <laughs> Blondie dread. Uh, I only say is... Blondie dread because uh, I don't want it to come off as a asshole thing. Uh, it's from Bad Boys too. The oh. Haitians in the when Will Smith and Martin Lawrence are trying to get information on the Haitians that are like selling drugs or whatever. The guy at the shop is like Blondie dread. That's gonna cost you a lot of money. And that's when they're like, "Oh, it's gonna cost us money." And they start busting up his shop or whatever and like breaking oh, right, everything. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, that's why I say that for context. <laughs> Continue. Yeah. Uh, he's also one of the the high lords of Valyrian blood. So it's the Targaryens and the Valyrians from old Valyria. Mm -hmm. Literally, it's Lord uh, Corlys Valyrian. Is like yeah, his and if, if you watched Game of Thrones, you know that uh, Valyrian steel, Valyrian steel, Valyrian, whatever, yeah. is one of the two things... That can kill White Walkers. Yeah. Is, yeah. So this is. And can really only be pretty big. forged, like. In Valeria. Yeah, because of the, the volcanics and the. and dragons, basically. Yeah. Um, so. But he basically runs the navy for mm. the Seven Kingdoms. And his ships keep getting ransacked. So they're trying to figure out, you know, what to do. Rhaenyra steps up and is like. You have dragon riders. Send the dragons. What better for a show of power with, like, minimal risk? And the, the King Viserys was like, eh, maybe you should uh, go with the King's Guard and help pick out... No, uh, it was Otto. Oh, Otto yeah, shut right. her down. Yeah, Reese the, the character. The hand of the king shuts her down, and it was like, blah, blah, blah. Maybe she should be doing something else. And then her dad, the king, is like, why don't you go show her this or whatever? Yeah, basically like, help pick the a new king's guard yeah. for the king since Daemon uh, Targaryen was banished at the end of the yeah. last episode. And what's cool <laughs> is when she's there, she like flexes her muscles and does not stand down. Like she's interviewing these knights after night after night, and she turns to uh, the now the lord, the new lord commander of the king's guard. Uh, Mc, McGrath? Is that his name in real life? I don't know. Uh, big, big guy with a very gray beard. He's in he, a lot of things. He was he in The stay. Witcher as well. Um, but it's like, how many of these have actual combat experience? And he like shows the one. She's like, you got the job. And it's yeah. the guy from the tournament that unseat. Uh, that bested her uncle. Yeah, that bested yeah. Matthew Smith. <laughs> that out Matt Smith, Matt Smith, because it was Morbin <laughs> time. Uh, but we also see that the king is still in pretty shitty health. Well, he's getting worse. Uh, yeah. You know, when when they the first episode there was a like small in... herpy on his back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that shit stays uh, with you for life. It is now. Um, his pinky finger is like Decaying. what and well part of it too is in the first episode uh at the end when he's yelling at his brother he clenches onto the iron throne and, and cuts himself and, and cuts himself and now Ooh, yeah, uh right. in this episode his pinky finger is like rotting away and yeah. they have to like stick his hand in a like a bucket of maggots to yeah. eat like the dead flesh away and the rest of the episode you see his pinky is like wrapped up yeah. He's not doing great. Yeah. <laughs> it's a slow decline because, I mean, this has been six months. So it's yeah. not like the infection is taking over quickly, mm -hmm. but his time is limited. Yeah. But also, mm -hmm. because it has been six months, the the council, uh, you know, in the, in the court, you know, the Hand of the King, Lord Cor Corliss, uh, even Lord Stark... Um, who is like the master coin or something like that, uh, is telling him that he needs to remarry because it's his I, duty yeah. as king to remarry and produce more heirs 
to the throne and to kingdoms and to like basically marry them off. Yeah. Uh, to keep the kingdoms united. And so, Lord Corliss yeah. uh, and his wife, who is actually the king's sister, have this great idea. And by great, I mean disgusting and terrible. Which to, is why Chad's joke earlier was funny now. Super fucked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, was to marry off their 12 year old daughter to someone that is old like enough. 60 years old. Yeah. 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 Just so wrong and it's like a really awkward scene because they're like walking together him and this like 12 year old girl and she's like they're like just kind of having a conversation at the end of their conversation she's basically like sir like i will give you like a bunch of kids and you know blah 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 i will be loyal to you and all the and it's just like and he's like, no, this is gross. I can't do this. He even says, is like, is that what your father told you to tell me? Yeah. And she just kind of looks at him like she doesn't know how to answer because, one, that is what she was told to tell him. But yeah. But, two, because she's a child and has, like, she's innocent. Like, you know, there's, yeah. and she's just being, like, whored off. And then there's a kind of, like, an underlying thing that happens during this episode that'll come to fruition at the end of it uh, where he, the king, is having like these secret meetings with um, It started at in the first episode but we didn't really talk yeah. about it last week. Yeah. Uh, Rhaenyra's um, lover slash best friend. We don't really know they, exactly like, yet. put the tension there that they're actually in love. Yeah. But, like, there's no definition there. Yeah. They're just, they're, like, super close best friends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but sorry, that sounded also gross because they're, like, children. She's but, Otto's daughter. Yeah, she is and the daughter and the, to the hand of the king. Yeah, and her and the king have, Rhaenyra's dad, have been having these, like, secret meetings. Because Otto originally yeah. set it up for like yeah. go to the king and offer him comfort yeah Otto Otto is kind of like little finger so far yeah dude we said that Nicole and I said that I yeah. technically Nicole said it she was like he reminds me of uh the what I what how she phrase it she said the little finger guy and I was like um, um Lord Baelish ba Lord Baelish yeah, yeah Peter Baelish she's like yeah <laughs> She's like, he reminds me of him. Just behind everything. Like, I I agree 100%. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I've and, been talking. I'm sorry. But the, the reason that we both, or we're all saying that is because, because he's been sending his daughter to comfort the king. He's found companionship and just someone that, like, genuinely is there to be kind and care. So when he announces that he is going to take a new wife... You know, Lord Corliss, uh, you know, is all like, yeah, he's going to marry my daughter. We're going to unite the houses of Valyria, show how strong we are. And then uh, King Viserys is like, and I choose Alicent Hightower. Mm -hmm. And before that actually happens, we kind of skipped a, a, a very, like, good scene of understanding between Rhaenyra and... And her father. And we also skipped yeah. the part where she like shows how big of a badass she is. But we can do that afterwards. But Rhaenyra and her dad have a like a heart to heart of how much they miss their mom, but they understand that there's they they miss her mom, his wife. And, but they have the understanding that duty still has to come because he is the king. From her friend's manipulation. Remember yeah. that yeah. whole scene where she, her friend who is going to marry her dad, like is like manipulates to her both into, of them. like, yeah, both she to Rhaenyra is like, sometimes you need to go to him. And then also yeah. to the king, to him, yeah. sometimes if you want to have conversations with her, you have to initiate the conversation. Lots of Game of Thrones vibes and the uh, sneaky 
<laughs> oh. sneaky shit. I wonder why also, there's Game of Thrones did, vibes here. We but. didn't say this, and I do want to say this real quick. We did get an official um, Game of Thrones intro on this episode. This one was cooler, though. Cause Way it's like cooler. A river it's like of blood. River of blood, but it's also running down the same kind of shit where, like, Game of Thrones would, like, post up, like, what house it was and, and you know, blah, blah, blah. The specific actors in this episode, if they don't show up in every episode yeah. sort of thing. But it, but it's the same song. Yeah, uh, they just use the yeah. same theme. Which, Which is cool. It was yeah. cool, but I was a wieners, little bummed. Wieners, balls and wieners, balls and wieners. <laughs> wiener, wiener, wiener. Dick and balls. One wiener next to another long wiener. Wiener, wiener, <laughs> wiener, wiener. I just, I I like that it was the same song. I wish it would have been like kind of a variation to show that it's. Like slowed different. down maybe a little bit or something. Or just kind of slow down different elements but it was literally just like the exact theme i actually really liked it it was it brought it back it brought me back i was like yeah. oh because like in the first episode like there's a slowed down version there's kind of like a broken down version that plays at the end not the end of the world now we're just like arguing it's okay. choices or not arguing but nitpicking at it i'll kill you and my whole family your whole family kill I'll your kill whole family, your family. Uh, <laughs> but uh, basically, you know, Blondie Dredd is pissed. He's pissed. Rhaenyra's pissed because she like approvingly nods to her father before he announces who his new bride is going to be. Because she thought it was going to be the twelve-year-old girl, yeah, not her best friend. Uber. Yeah. yeah, and literally, even her friend is standing across the table from her looking you know kind of proud but also like staring Rhaenyra down and the second that her name is announced like she puts her head down like because she knows what she did yeah she knows what has happened mm -hmm. and Rhaenyra is just like laser beam into her and then storms off yeah also we do get some Matt Smith in this because it's always Morbin time <laughs> uh, he steals a dragon egg and has also conquered Dragonstone because he was supposed to go back to the old lands, but instead not, goes to Dragonstone and fortifies not just himself. Enly, not just Endly, not yeah. just only a dragon egg. He steals the dragon egg that was meant for Rhaenyra's now deceased uh, infant brother. That's the egg that he chose to steal after in the first episode calling him the prince for a day or the heir for a day yeah. or whatever it was. Uh, then he steals the egg that was supposed to go in their tradition. Uh, the dragon egg goes into the crib with the baby so that they grow up together, the dragon and the baby, yeah. and create that bond. Um, and he stole that egg. Not yeah. just any dragon egg. He stole... That egg. that egg specifically. <laughs> yeah. And so the Hand of the King and some King's Guard, they go to Dragonstone. And Dragonstone has not been destroyed yet. You know, it has not been, like, melted away by dragon fire. So I think I'm hoping that we get to see that battle in this show. But they they go basically to retrieve the egg and basically tell Damon to fuck off and stop being a little twat. Um, and it looks like there's going to a, be a battle uh, between the, the Kingsguard and Damon and his loyal soldiers. And he's got a dragon on his side. I was going to say, then Damon's dragon shows up and they're like, oh man, we're fucked. Yeah, everyone's going <laughs> to die. Yeah. And then you hear a second dragon and it's really cool. It comes in from under the, the fog and the, cl the cloud pops up and it's Rhaenyra and she lands on the side of the hand of the king and the king's guard she gets off basically tells her uncle to fuck off and I was like you want to do this you really want to do it, this you want to start was, a war you want to die it was dope she's she literally not basically she literally says what are you going to kill me uncle yeah. then do it yeah. otherwise give me back the dragon egg yeah and he kind of throws a temper tantrum, 
turns away and then like chucks the egg over his shoulder yeah. and she catches it yeah she, this is a good female character she's so yeah. badass yeah i am so excited for the rest of this show oh what did i bumped my desk there's my mm. oh god <laughs> we're we're gonna keep oh there it is third time's the charm i guess nope nope <laughs> Uh, Jay, keep going. I'm going to try and make this work. Uh, sounds good. Uh, well, in the aftermath of um, Rhaenyra's dad, the king, uh, marrying uh, her lover slash best friend, uh, it, uh, Lord Cor- Corliss, who is Blondie Dread that I mentioned earlier, <laughs> who is pissed about this, uh, team goes to i mean that's kind of like the end of the show they show him talking to someone and he's like hey like this is what's happening i'm pissed off about this these crab people are fucking up my ships now you and i are both pissed about your brother uh let's team up so he teams up with um with um fucking a what's his name damon targaryen um and so now you can kind of the civil war between the Targaryens is starting to take shape a little bit. Yeah, it's cool. I'm really excited for it. And the, I didn't watch the preview for next week. Chad did, but you said there was. There's some stuff. we're gonna see conflict with uh, the the realms against the crab people. So we're gonna we're gonna see how. How fucking terrifying they are in battle, not just after a siege where they are just crucifying and torching, torturing people. I'm excited. This show, from the first episode, exceeded my expectations. And I'm Same. loving it 100%. Yeah. But yeah. Any, I think it's good. Any final moments about uh, House of the Dragon, Jake? I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but yeah. Just no. go watch it. Yeah, go watch it. Spoiler mm. alert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did get that in there at the beginning, but... Huzzah! Huzzah! <laughs> All right, we are going to close out this episode, but before we do... Yeah, there's a, a few things that, I mean, you've heard us talk about before, but, I mean, obviously, if you enjoy the show... Please like, share, subscribe, wherever you <clears throat> listen or watch the podcast. Uh, you know, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, share that with friends, whatever it might be. We do also have our Patreon page if you want to support us. It's a great way to help us out on a monthly giving basis. It just You get access to behind-the-scenes footage, bonus merch, all that good stuff, but it also helps us put out this show just because we we don't make any money everything that happens comes out of our pocket yeah it's Um, just for fun yeah we're we're here to do that but you know it'd be nice to at least pay our producer Uh (laughs) (laughs) the more you give the more we can give like the more you guys pour in like the more you guys give us the bigger better shit we can do with this podcast we've already had some way way out of our league guests on this show and we've done some pretty cool giveaways too yeah uh and if you guys give us you know give back we can we can do more with that we can you know better guests yeah just give it back back. just give it back uh if that's not something that you're in the position to do or just don't feel like doing but you want to help in some other way we do also have our web store it's at allthingsnerdpodcast.com. You know, we do make a little bit off of our merch, and then that goes right back into the podcast. So if yeah. you don't want to do a monthly thing, there's that. Other also, than... if you don't want to give money, just like and share. Yeah. I mean, that helps know. the most. That gets yeah. more eyes on it. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it helps us spread our love of nerd and drinking to other people we just want to be inclusive everyone's welcome so with that being said 
Uh huh. I don't have a beer. I gotta wait. Oh, it falls you out. Up. That's fine. Uh, <clears throat> we do love you guys, and thank you so much for for tuning in week after week. It really does mean a lot to us. Yeah. We enjoy it a lot. Jake, the honor is yours. This has been the All Things Nerd Poodcast. Poodcast.